Yo, what up? This is Lesser One. Welcome to the Den of Iniquities. I uh, hope you enjoy your stay. So, I just wanted to talk about something that was kind of very, well, very personal to me. And um, I'm sharing it because it was such a pivotal moment in my life. And also, I hope that it helps someone else out there. So, I want to talk about the time I beat bipolar disorder. Um, so a little backstory, I was spending many years from, uh, you know, sort of late teenage to early twenties. There was a few years where I had this disorder and I didn't even know. Um, and it was when I was going to uni. Um, so I just, what made me realize there was something wrong was, um, well, a few things. I just felt out of place. And also, when there was like a group conversation going on with a few people when I was involved, the conversation would be sort of flowing nicely. People would be talking, having fun. And then as soon as I try and join in and say something, people would stop. It would just ruin the conversation. People would look at me funny. And it just made me feel like far out there. There is something wrong with me. Um... This is a uh, homebrew gold nail, um, Belgian gold nail. That's what I'm drinking. Sorry, back on topic. And um, it just left. It just made things worse. It just ruined my self-esteem. Um, but I didn't know that it was a mental illness. I thought like I took a lot of drugs when I was younger, like a lot for a long time and I thought I'd just ruined my brain like a lot of psychedelics and amphetamines and things like that and stayed up for days and I thought nah I've just ruined my brain and that's why people don't like me I can't get along with normal people now because I'm cooked but um, I didn't give up and just go well I'm cooked so this is my cooked life now what I did was actually to what kept me going was just this thought in my head where I wasn't born this way um, and where there's a way in, there's a way out. So I just had to find it. And what actually got me to seek some help, like I went to the doctors at uni and they diagnosed me with severe depression. No, sorry, severe anxiety. Because I was like, I just can't talk to people, people, like, you know, so, and then it, I just shut up. And, and I did have anxiety because of the bipolar. It was like a side effect of this low self-esteem and just questioning everything. And, like, you know, because I'm actually an introvert and, um, like, possibly on the spectrum, um, I just internalised everything and just overthought everything and I just kept it all inside. So it was actually hard for me to get a bipolar di diagnosis because um, I didn't have any outward signs. Like I wasn't acting crazy and people would be like, nah, like from the outside I didn't look like there was anything wrong. But inside it was torture, like hell, 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 hell. And so what led me to actually get the bipolar dis disorder um, diagnosis was um, I was on the dole. Um, because I couldn't keep a job, I'd lost all my friends, my family, I pushed them away, I couldn't have relationships, nothing, because I couldn't even keep up a conversation. So, um, the doll were going to cut me off, and they're like, you need to go for a job, and I'm like, well, you know, I've got severe anxiety, this is my doctor's certificate, and that worked for a little bit, but then eventually they're like, nah we got these two jobs for you. You either got to go work at, um, it was like a sandwich shop at Colonnades or um, a pub that was near my dad's house. And I'm like, all right. And I knew some people that worked there. So I'm like, I'll go to the pub. I'll go live at my dad's. I'll hit up the people that work there that I know and say, can you get me a job? Um, that'll work out well. So I went for it and I met like this bloke there and for the first time in years, I just connected with this guy, like, like just on the level, and and he was like, just as crazy as me, 
and it and we spoke about it and we and he's like yeah man yeah we we're both crazy you know it, i know it like that's why no one else understands us but we stand, understand each other we're both crazy um and he's like you got to get on this valpro this like um my doctor's put me on it and it and it just calms me down and gets me out of my head and i can talk to people i'm like this is what I need. This is like, get me, where, how do I get this Valpro? And he's like, you got to go to the doctors. You got to get, you got to, you know, tell them you're cooked, tell them you're crazy and you need Valpro. So I went home and looked it up. I'm like, Valpro, what is this Valpro? What's it for? And it said like, you know, it's used to treat um, epilepsy. It's mainly an epilepsy drug. But also, it's used for bipolar disorder, and I was like, "Oh, bipolar disorder? What? What the hell?" Um, so I looked further into it, like symptoms of bipolar disorder, and I'm like, "I've got most of these. Like, I can totally relate to this." And um, so I did like an online test thing, and it's like, "Yep, you have bipolar disorder. Welcome to the bipolar club." So I booked a doctor's appointment. I like spoke to a few people and they're like, go see this doctor. They won't just like put you on drugs. So go speak to them, they're a good doctor. So I got made an appointment. Um, I had to catch the bus because I wasn't um, driving at the time. Um, so I caught the bus down there and went to my appointment and this lady's like, mm, cause like what I said, like I internalized it all. I didn't have any outward symptoms. She's like, you look normal to me. You're just sitting here, we're like talking. And I'm like, no, there is actually something wrong. And I had to fight. I had to actually fight. They put me, they sent me, she's like, oh, there's a few ways we can do this. You can go see these mental health nurses. Um, so we'll do that first. And then, you know, we'll go send you to a psychologist. You can go there for like five times because it's free under this mental health act. And I had to go through this whole process I went to the mental health nurses and they're like, you've never been hospitalized. You've never like done anything crazy, like, you know, lose all your money or um, all this stuff. And I was going to see a psychologist and she's just like, um, the, after the mental health nurses, because they're like, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just a young man going through young man stuff. Um, so I went back to the doctor and I'm like, there's seriously something wrong. Like there is something wrong. We need to do this. We need to sort this out. So she's like, all right, we'll send you to the psychologist. So, uh, sorry, this is a long story. I'll try and cut it short. So anyway, I went to the psychologist and eventually they sent me to a psychiatrist and then they're like, yep, okay, well, your diagnosis isn't really clear. You've got symptoms of mania, symptoms of um, psychosis. It's either cyclothymia, which is a type of bipolar, with psychosis or it's schizoaffective disorder. Basically, it's a mood disorder with psychosis is what I had. I just say bipolar because it's easier and people know what it is. Um, so yeah, and then they got me on this Valpro and fuck me, as the first night, as soon as I took my first dose, like you have to build up, I felt it straight away. I'm like, this is it. I could sleep, my like, um, I could talk to people, I could talk to my family, um, like, um, straight away, like, I knew this was it, but the way I kind of healed myself, like, now I'm totally off the meds, I don't see a psychiatrist, nothing, um, so I went through a process in myself, because I was already battling it in my own brain and sort of not getting anywhere, um, what I would do is alongside seeing the psychiatrist and taking the medication, doing the treatment, doing what they wanted, I would also learn the early warning signs. That is crucial because like early signs of mania, like the very first signs are fun. Like that actually feels good to begin with. You get chatty and you're social and you would like want to stay up all night and party. But then soon it just like extends and goes overboard and you're like 
want to just like verbal diarrhea everyone and you can't get satisfied with anything and you want to stay up for days you want to do drugs you want to party like um it just goes crazy so but the early stage is very nice like it feels good so you want to keep going with it but you've got to go this is this is i know what this is i know where this is going and i would just have this routine in place where i would go just chill out i would just like um what i would do is i would go have a shave because it was calming so even like i wore my face down to red raw just from shaving every time i'm like go have a shave because i would you know get the hot water splash it on my face just go through the process and it would calm me down and if that didn't work then i would go lay in a dark room put the fan on low lay on my bed with the lights off no noise and just chill for like and do nothing for like until i felt like it would calm down um and i would just it was just like i was militant about it i was like every time like no nah, i'm fighting this and well i'm not not fighting it i'm res i'm unwinding this i'm i'm going to halt this in its tracks before it gets anywhere and over it took me maybe a couple of years and i was just there was no like slip ups no like oh this is too hard no i'm not going to do this I was just like, I, I want to go back, I, I wasn't born this way, I want to go back to the way I was. So I kept at it, and I think eventually what it did, it retrained my brain um, to not go to that place. It eventually, like, whereas to begin with, that was a super highway of like, as soon as I would get triggered, like, have a coffee, have a cigarette, boom, manic. Um, I had to give up coffee for a year. I gave up smoking cigarettes, any sort of stimulant. I would just stay away from drugs, alcohol, everything. As soon as that mania kicked in or like the early stages, go chill out, go have a shave. And I was just militant about doing that. Like, made sure I got plenty of sleep. And um, eventually I just trained my brain to not go manic. And now it's been eight years without an episode. Um, med free, eight years. It got to the stage where I was taking the meds and it was just like, I don't need these anymore. They're actually making me feel like sluggish and I can feel in myself like I haven't had an episode in months. Because even when you're on the meds, it kind of dulls it, but you can still, you're still having those episodes. Like you can feel it. You're like, I'm having an episode, but the meds are kind of squashing it, but you know, but then it got to a stage where it was like, I haven't had that in months. It's just, I've just got this sort of um, level dullness of the meds and just no episodes. Um, so yeah, now I'm living good. I'm drinking beer. Woo! lesser one in the den of iniquities listening to my this is my ep uh chi ep on the background you can go check that out anywhere any streaming platform or you can go download it whatever i hope you've enjoyed my story i hope you got something from it and if you like this hit the like button give me a comment if you want more of this do it peace peace in the middle east bye